Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence. I hope you're having a great day. It can only get better with a special guest like the one that I'm thrilled to welcome back for a call about Thank You, Mr. Churchill, his new CD, and also about his November 15th show at the Blaisdell Concert Hall and November 17th stop at the Mac, both on sale now. It's an honor and a privilege to welcome back Peter Frampton. Aloha and mahalo, Brother Peter. Ah, great. Great to speak with you. Uh, thank you so much. It's, a, it's a, a thrill to get to talk to you again. I've gotten to a number of times with your, your records. And the thing about you, Peter, is all the people who have been fans of yours for so long are really rewarded by being fans because your records continue to they grow with meaning and they grow with your, your guitar prowess. So congrats on Thank You, Mr. Churchill. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one that I'm um, very proud of. Uh, it's um, it's it's definitely something that I felt that um, I'm playing some different stuff, some new stuff. I'm writing differently. Um, I, I, it, I'm evolving still, and that's uh, uh, that's the whole idea. You you hope to to. Uh, I hope to play something today I didn't play yes I couldn't play yesterday you know that's been my my MO you know and so yeah I think this album is um I mean uh usually after I've done a record you know there's uh, you either forget about it or you <laughs> or, but this one uh, I definitely enjoy uh playing songs from it on um on the road and uh it, it's definitely something that I'm proud of and and you should be. I have uh, I've come to have a few favorites on it. Um, the ending of the title track is just an epic Frampton solo over huge power chords. It evolves. Uh, it has almost kind of like a vintage Sabbath sound with the 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 uh, chords, and then there's these scorching leads, really soulful, emotional. Has this psychedelic organ noise or whatever at the end. Can you kind of guide me through the thing that I'm missing is the angle with the lyrics. Kind of help me with the reference to Churchill. And okay. Wh- well, it, it's it, it's um. Uh, thank you, Mr. Churchill. Is basically um, <clears throat> me thanking the Allies uh, for um, uh, for bringing my father back from the Second World War. If the Allies hadn't won. Um, a lot of things would have been different, obviously. So, um, having lost <clears throat> my mother and my father over the last uh, five, six years, um, there, there comes a moment where you you suddenly realize it, that the penny drops, and you think, "Oh, I'm an orphan now. <laughs> I don't have parents. Yes, I'm an adult, and and." Uh, um, I, I don't need my parents like I did when I was a child, but they're no longer there. And I think that was the biggest thing, so that that one day it just made me... I, I spoke to my brother about this, too, when you suddenly realized, no, they're gone, you can't make that Sunday phone call. And um, <clears throat> so that made me think about how I got here, and that was basically, you know, if things had been different, you know, I wouldn't be here. And then... Um, uh, thinking to likening that to today, <clears throat> where unfortunately we still haven't learned. And if we could, you know, if it were feasible in a naive way for my children to be born with the wisdom that I leave the planet with, maybe, you know, if we could evolve that way, um, that would be amazing. And it was just like a, you know, a, just a thought. And because here we are still... Um, after the Second World War, um, uh, you know, uh, still uh, Britain was what is uh, was it, uh, in a state of peace for uh, much longer than the U.S. Um, because of Korea, even though we sort of fought in that as well. But um, we we just don't seem to learn, um, and here we are in wars all around the world, and um, it's. Uh, if, before I go into another diatribe, I'll stop there because the, the reasons for war are just so so ridiculous to me. It's brilliant, though, because um, what I kind of suspected is happening. The song is like working on two levels because it's both talking about the war, talking about what you said about the foolishness 
of war, but it also, like a lot of the songs on Thank You, Mr. Churchill, they seem to be filled with this, uh, this sense of there are moments of regret in the lyrics, uh, moments of longing for stuff, wanting things like you just described with your parents, you know, that uh, only being in your shoes, you know, you'd be able to say something like that. But you know what I mean? I hear those two things going on throughout the record, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, when you, um, uh, like current current events, uh, unfortunately, like restraint I covered in that with the, the financial meltdown, um, which affected the whole world, um, that that's a frustration of uh of legal fraud in in in, in the banking and and uh financial world which um uh, we've removed or or government has removed all restrictions on uh it seems again around the world but i i see it um mainly uh obviously in in the us um all restrictions on on legal fraud or, of of um, in high places where the money the, and the uh, and the the benefits are so large. Um, meanwhile, at the bottom of the ladder, you know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones uh, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith can't afford to pay their mortgage payments because of of the greed that has been uh, and fraud that has legally been committed by. And maybe we'll find that some of it is illegal, but uh, b- with all the financial restrictions being removed over the last few years, um, uh, you know, uh, basically, um, they're walking away with these CEOs of these huge companies walking away with these huge bonuses of hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, it is legal. And... Um, it's just um, caused the downfall of where we are right now in America, where we've got, you know, an average of 10% unemployment. And I, I have no idea how many people have lost their houses, what the figure is, but it's huge. Yeah, I love that line, the greedy pigs. Um, <laughs> in, in that song, I was going to ask you about it. You just brilliantly took it, took the question uh, without needing an intro. Uh, that cool noise in the breakdown towards the front of restraint. What is that that makes that 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 weird noise? Um, I'm I'm not sure which. There's like you that g- is. you you do like I guess like one verse or one cor- chorus. Everything comes to like. Oh, oh, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, that's um, it's actually bass. Um, uh-huh. it's a couple of tracks of bass, just one sliding up and one sliding down at the same time. And we just sort of, uh, fiddled with that a little bit. Um, it's just the whole track is, um, from the, from the word go, that was the last track I wrote for the record. And, and it's got this very, before I even started singing any words, it had this ominous sort of, um, uh, feeling it gave me unsettling you know the riff was very weird and um so we were looking for all sorts of things that um that would enhance the ominous unsettling because that's and and that's why i think it it um inspired the lyrics which i just started singing um in basic form not like they, they ended up being but of the idea of restraint and um so yeah, that that's a that's a, a bass that sort of is unnerving when that comes in. <laughs> nah, it's huge. I, I love the back line on on the sound because I was listening to it. I was like, the record has a lot of those actually. There's a couple other ones I was going to point out that that sonically it just delivers on. Um, Road to the Sun, brilliant vocals by your son uh, on that track, um, and more catchy, huge riffs. And it led me to ask you this. Does your music consuming patterns or do your music consuming patterns influence the direction of the sound when you write? Because I'm just curious where that kind of sound came from in that. Um, well, we wrote it on um, on acoustic. I, I, Julian um, and I got together, uh, as we do often, and, and just play some music. And we decided we would try and write a couple of things, not necessarily for the record, but just to have fun. And... Um, I had that riff on acoustic, uh, the opening riff, and um, <clears throat> and just we just said, well, that's going to be a great, huge electric, you know. So, but, but, and then it was just um, 
uh, apart from the fact that we knew it was going to be an electric riff, uh, I had an idea of the sound, but not until I experimented and just probably took me um, a couple hours, m maybe more, to find the right amp and the right guitar to to to. Uh, which is the, the fun part <clears throat> is is just uh, experimenting. I have the studio at home, so the clock isn't running, so we can <laughs> basically take our time and. Um, and and find whatever we want to find you know um and then um yeah it was uh, <clears throat> i think it ended up being um uh an old uh a vintage sg um uh gibson um and probably like i think an, an old fender uh deluxe or something i, I make i think <clears throat> i think it's the fender deluxe amp and a, a vox AC15, the small Vox, mixed together. Just uh, I do a lot of that. So um, and um, yeah, it was we love the sound and and Chris Kimsey is obviously the the same engineer producer that I used on my very early solo records uh, up until and including Frampton Comes Alive and I'm in You and Where I Should Be. So we hadn't worked together for years and years and years. So. Um, and Chris is very, very detailed. He loves little tiny things that little ear candy. And um, so the two of us working together again was was perfect. We we had a we had a ball, just sonically um, sculpting the record together. Uh, it has a great sound. I mean, there's so much, and and just I mean, his vocals, by the way, on that track are outstanding. He has so much soul. It just like pours from him. Oh, thank you. Well, you'll be glad to know, and, uh, and so are we, that Julian will be there, and he will be singing that song. So he's <laughs> flying in from Los Angeles just for those two sh for these two shows in uh, in Hawaii. I was gonna ask. That's really <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's his birthday present. He said, his birthday's not till March, but he said for my birthday, could you fly me to Hawaii? <laughs> Man. So uh, I'm doing that. So he he'll be there, um, and we're really looking forward to him coming and singing with us. That's so cool. Not just <clears throat> not just flying to Hawaii, but playing with you when he gets here, man, for two shows. We've done, um, I guess he's done about a dozen shows now uh, um, whenever we go to uh, uh, the West Coast. And then occasionally when he's ta got time off from work, he, um, he, he'll he fly somewhere and, and join us on, on, uh, on a couple of gigs over a weekend and stuff. So, yeah, the, he's like the... Uh, the sixth member of the band the, the guys love him so we can't wait to see him oh, that's huge when when did you first realize that your son was going to be following to some degree in your footsteps um well uh let's see probably only about four four or five years ago uh before that um he he had played uh i gave him a guitar very when he was very young and nothing and uh he wasn't i said oh well you know i just want there to be a guitar around if he's you know uh if he's gonna go that way he'll pick it up and he'll sure. start playing and um but um i got a call when he was like nine or something or ten and he said dad i know what i want to play and i said what he said, drums. <laughs> I said, oh, no. <laughs> so um, he started, I got him a set of drums, and, and he started playing drums, and um, he became very good very quickly, and that's when I first got the inkling, oh, this boy's got, uh, he got rhythm. So, um, and then he, he started um uh, with jam, when he, with him playing drums and and me playing guitar, and we wrote something together, um, and he sang it and um, wrote some lyrics, and he was only about eleven or twelve then, and then and then all of a sudden he uh, a few years later he he said, Dad, I got something to play you, and he gets out a guitar. And uh, and he plays me um, a song he'd written on guitar, and it, it blew me away. It wasn't just a first song; it was 
it was a good song. <laughs> yeah. You know, so and then he's continued to uh develop as a songwriter. He's very um uh he writes um an incredible amount. Um and uh his guitar playing is getting better and better and um so yeah, I'm I, I'm thrilled. He's um he's he's a great musician now and um a wonderful singer and songwriter and and I think he's uh, he's looking right now for um a band situation. I think he's trying to uh put one together over the next uh, few months hopefully and uh, then I'll help steer him towards a uh, uh, producer and um uh, you know make a make some music uh record some music. That's cool the way you just refer to that help steer um cuz I was when it, when you when you dissect some of the lyrics on this record there's a this real motown soul vibe and groove on invisible man right and uh it has these huge background vocals i mean it's such a, like a period piece reproduction in a way but then in, in on another level the song has these lyrics that are really cool um and it has like this uh, sense of someone guiding someone towards, uh, you know, music and pulling the strings. Um, right. What inspired that, that one? Basically, that is the Funk Brothers on there. Um, the the wonderful musicians that um, were on every Motown record. So um, Bob Babbitt on bass, and who took over from um, James Jameson, and. Um, uh, Eddie Willis on guitar, who was one of the three main guitar players uh, that played on every Four Tops, every Temptations, every, you name it, every Stevie Wonder. In fact, Eddie Willis came up with the riff that uh, Sign Seal delivered. Ding, 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 ding. That is Eddie's, that's not Stevie Wonder's riff, that's Eddie Willis's riff. And uh, I had the honor of inducting them into the Musicians Hall of Fame in Nashville a few years ago and got to play Signed Sealed with them. And that's when he told me that that's my riff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so uh, I asked them, you know, I told them how I'd been a fan. I was, everything Motown was, was all right with me. And it had been a huge uh, inspiration uh, musically. And uh, so hold on one second. Hold on. Sure. No, apparently they've just added an interview uh, in a few minutes, so apparently the phone's going to be ringing again. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. Um, let me just get an, a final so uh, question in, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Vaudeville Nana and the Banjo Lele. Uh, I love that. It has such an island-friendly uh, sound to it, and you even have the ukulele in it. Um, <laughs> it has a, and also it has this feeling of this painful nostalgia, which is in the song. Um, yeah, the best days of my life, I can never get back. What will never be again, but I can close my eyes and I can see them. Share a little bit about that song with me, and, and especially because, like I said, it has a very island feel. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> well, the reason being is that my first instrument was a banjolele. Uh, which obviously is the banjo-shaped version of the ukulele. So, um, and that I found in the attic um, when I was seven years old and asked my dad, what is this? And he said, well, your grandmother wanted me to uh, show you a couple of chords if you were interested. Um, and um, so I said, well, come on then, let's show me a couple of chords. So that's that was my first instrument. So <clears throat> the whole story of... Um, uh, Vaudeville Nana and the Banjolele is basically my my grandmother was very much into English vaudeville, uh -huh. um, and they would it, when there wasn't a piano around or it was too out of tune, then then the the artist would everyone used to play banjolele or ukulele to accompany themselves, um, and uh, so that's where the uh, vaudeville Nana comes from, okay. and the Banjolele, and it basically is the story. If Churchill is the story of me, how I got here as a person, um, 
Vaudeville Nanner is the story of me, uh, how I started as a musician. And it was in the attic <laughs> in my house with my dad, uh, teaching me Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dooley, and Michael Row the Boat. That was it, which I, I learned on um, on Banjulele. And then uh, then it's just the, the, the song is just the story of how my, my family... Uh, um, were there all the way through this to um, buy me a guitar and and uh, you know how my mother helped me with writing the lyrics to my first ever song and uh, so it, it's just basically the story of me as the musician and then at the end of it how um, uh, how much family had had, had played in in encouragement. They'd never pushed me. They were not. They were the last thing from stage parents, but they were always there to encourage me um, uh, along the way. And uh, now they're gone. And but if I close my eyes, we're all sitting at the table again. You know. So it's 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 a um, it's sad, but it's to me it's very uplifting. The fact that um family and and the fact that family is so important in everyone's life and especially mine i love it it's a brilliant record and uh it's been fun getting to talk to you about it i hope when you're in town do you think there'd be even a moment where we're we're public radio we're the npr station here in the islands do you think there'd be even a moment where i could record a a short in-person interview while you're in honolulu i'm sure we could arrange that Okay, I would really appreciate it. Who should I go through to to try to set that up? That Brian? Who did you? Is Lisa Jenkins the name you know? Brian uh, Shmernikoff, I think, is the guy I talked to. Okay, ask him that you would like to contact Lisa Jenkins, who's my manager. Okay, and I'll say you said too. Excellent. Thank you, Peter. I'll give you a big hug and travel safe to us. All right, will do. Can't wait to see you. I, I look forward to it, and uh, thank you again for being available. All righty. Bye for now. Aloha. Bye-bye. Aloha, this is Peter Frampton here, and you're tuned to the only show that matters with my friend Dave Lawrence. Aloha, it's Peter Frampton here, and I'm here to help my friend Dave Lawrence celebrate this magical time of day. Hey, Brother Dave, have a happy 420. (laughs) 